Listeriosis is a, an odd disease. It's caused by Listeria monocytogenes. It's transmitted primarily through food that's contaminated. It's usually raw foods, things like cheeses and uh, deli meats, kinds of things that we wouldn't typically cook. If we did cook them, it would kill the Listeria. So these are gram-positive bacilli. But unlike Bacillus species and Clostridium species, these do not form endospores. So we don't have to worry about the complications of these resistant spores sticking around for a long time. However, the one little uh, gimmick that Listeria monocytogenes has is that it grows well at 4 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of your refrigerator. So if you have food, let's say it's a camembert, the soft cheeses like camembert and some of those seem to be the guiltiest. Let's say you've got some cheeses that are uh, Listeria positive. They're actually going to be able to grow just fine in your refrigerator. <clears throat> so we're we as consumers are really uh, strapped and um, in terms of what we're able to do to protect ourselves we really rely heavily on the FDA and other agencies to make sure that in the food production process listeria is kept to a minimum so it's transmitted primarily through food but it's important to know that it can be transmitted through blood um, from a pregnant mother to the fetus and so the fetus is really in danger if a pregnant woman does uh, does come down with stereosis. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can see some of the uh, some of the features of listeria that make it a tough tough bug to fight once we get it. <clears throat> it's very good at tricking its way into our cells uh, through endocytosis. So it it almost rings the doorbell, so to speak, and convinces the host cell, starting with the intestinal lining, and then typically moving from there to macrophages, your white blood cells that try to gobble it up. Now they can protect themselves from the macrophages, from being digested, using a toxin called Listeriolysin O. And so if they get gobbled up by a macrophage, they secrete the Listeriolysin O and it kills the macrophage, hopefully from their perspective, before the macrophage digests them. They can also sometimes survive for a while inside the macrophage as a way of hiding. There are other bacteria that can do that as well. We'll talk about one of them in a few minutes. <clears throat> From the macrophages, they often uh, work their way to the liver and work their way into liver cells and even into gallbladder cells. At the bottom it says cell-to-cell -cell transmission. One of the tricks that Listeria uses is that instead of escaping from a cell that it's infected out into the exposed tissue, the exposed interstitial fluids where the immune system can recognize it and potentially clear it, they have a way of kind of boring from one cell to the next by, in a sense, drilling through them using something called ACT A, where they take the cytoskeleton of the host cell and they rearrange it. They rearrange the cytoskeleton to help it punch holes from one cell to the next. And you get these extrusions of cells uh, that can spread and move without ever exposing themselves. To, uh, to the extracellular spaces where the immune system can get a hold of them. So once a Listeria infection gets started, it's a pretty nasty thing. <clears throat> the disease Listeriosis um, is, is uh, it's interesting. Most healthy adults are asymptomatic or have mild flu-like symptoms. So uh, it's believed that most of us get exposed to it uh, more than once. And as long as we're healthy, then we're not gonna get sick. And even if we get a pretty big dose, we might get some mild flu-like symptoms, a little bit of aches, some fever, it might last a couple of days, and then it goes away. The most at-risk people that we know of are the immunocompromised. So if someone is immunocompromised for one reason or another, these listeria bacteria that, that get from our food into our intestines, they, uh, through endocytosis, worm their way into, <clears throat> into the uh, cells lining our intestinal wall, and from there they can spread. Uh, pregnant women, as we mentioned on the last slide, are particularly vulnerable primarily because of the fetus, primarily because the fetus is so vulnerable. Newborns and elderly, that's, that's common for most infections. Uh, meningitis is uh, one of the, the high risks of complication. Sepsis, which means a bloodborne infection, in this case a bacteremia, uh, and miscarriage. So a pregnant woman who gets active listeriosis is at high risk for miscarriage. That's one of the things that we have to watch for. So that's listeria.